So you want to learn how to create Photoshop composites and you don't know how to play it? How can you do that? That's an infomercial if I've ever seen one. Okay, let's jump into this. God damn it. Hi everyone, to you with another few today. In today's video, we are gonna be talking about blending images in Photoshop. This is gonna be a kind of a series. I'm gonna um, like go about like blending stuff on today's video. Next video is gonna be shadow and like uh, the shadow and light. And the next video is gonna be highlights and like glowy things. And the final video is gonna be uh, all about like how to like add little like final finalizing it like adding details glows uh color pops and all that so this video i have two images i have this in this shot from greg garnhart from unsplash and i have this it's probably on everyone's pro like profile profile no profile uh, computer because this is one of mo the most downloaded images on unsplash it's by the icons a team and both of the images are gonna be on the description down below if you wanna do this piece, this piece, or follow the tutorial with me. Before anything, if you wanna support this channel, give it a subscribe, give it a subscribe button. We have a subscribe button, but give it another one and click it by the way. And <laughs> give it a like and share with a friend or whatever, if you trust me. If you don't, well, watch the video and learn, cause I'm special, I don't know. I'm not special, I'm so sorry. Okay, first things first. So I'm going to drag the model into our background. Um, and now that we have our background and uh, model, I chose this model shot because uh, it's shot at uh, eye level. So you kind of can just create whatever perspective you, you want with it. Um, so I wanted to be able to play around and show you how the way you put your eye, like the horizon line can affect the way your model and subject uh, are perceived by the viewer. So first things first, let's take the background out of the model shot. I'm gonna use the object selection tool and just select subject and use Photoshop 2021's uh, algorithm to just select my, my subject for me because I just want a rough outline. We, we are not gonna be like refining it right now. It's just a rough outline so we can see what we could like play around with. So now we have uh, the image cut out, like it's just the model, right? So I'm gonna control J over the, the background layer. And this is um, how I'm gonna play with the horizon line. If you are hearing me say, oh, horizon line, horizon line, whatever, the, whatever is that. So that's just this, like every line Oh, that's not straight, just like me. So every line on this image, is gonna converge into a point in the horizon line. That's the vanishing point. If this shot was shot like from top, bottom, whatever, you would also have a vanishing point. But since it's shot at eye level, you can roughly make it fit any different like perspective you want because if i drag a line into like the from the vanishing point into the model like you can virtually fit the model anywhere and it still makes kind of sense so now that we have that knowledge we know what a horizon line is and we know what a vanishing point is i'm gonna place it over the like the, this whatever this is because I don't like it and I just want to cover it up but I'm gonna place the model right dab in the, in the middle because that's what I want for the crop um, when we go for the crop and I'm gonna control T to show like all the transformation uh, options when you have a, a, an image and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller and I'm gonna just like drag up and down on the model so I can see where the perspective feels better to me. So if I do this, the model will look giant. Cause like, wait, that's if that's the floor, how is she so tall? If I do this, the model looks tiny. And that's how like in movies, you can like have like a rat 
in comparison to like a huge tree and you know the rat is really small and that's what what's happening here your eyes in line it's telling you oh if she's like so low under it she probably is very small so when you're telling your story you need to know who your subject is is she a tiny fairy is she a giant woman i don't know so for this composite though i'm gonna make it a little bit under her waist i think that kind of fits it very well and as you can see i duplicated the background image because our background image is not big enough for it for it to not like have this space around it so if i duplicate it i have this all of this from the original one and now we have like a base to work with okay so now we have the background we kind of set the horizon i'm gonna go to the crop tool and this is a little trick if you didn't know if you press control and you drag your mouse over the image it like it when you press control it gives you the ruler and if you drag it it straightens the image for you so there's a little tip for you. Uh, okay, let me just crop it a little bit so we don't have like uh, empty pixels everywhere. And I unchecked the delete the delete cropped pixels so I don't lose any of the information outside of our crop. Okay, so let it do that. No, now we have a background and our uh, model. First things first, I'm gonna do is create a black and white adjustment layer. And now I can see the actual values. And this is for me to know the values of the model and the values of the background when I'm trying to match both. And that's, tr translating that, I mean, I'm gonna try to fix the light and make it match the uh, background image. So now with the black and white on, I'm going to create a second adjustment layer. You can do this with both curves and levels. I'm going to do levels because it's a little bit easier to explain. And I'm going to clip it to the uh, model uh, adjustment layer. So this little like pointy thing right here tells Photoshop that if, if, like, if I put it right there, everything um, behind it, so from, from this point to the pure black, we want that to be the blackest value on the model and if i do the opposite if i go here and i oops and i drag the white point and i push it like here it's telling photoshop oh everything from here to here so from this gray point to the white point it's it needs to be pure white and if i do the same but on the lower like on this one this is telling uh, photoshop this is the darkest value possible on that image and if you do the opposite this is telling okay this is the like brighter like the highest value possible um, for that image and this just like plays with the contrast of your image if that was confusing I'm gonna try to one of these days make like a, a full series of like every adjustment tool and all that so I can um, explain that in more detail so what I'm gonna do is try to match our model to the background and I'm gonna maybe drop the white a little bit and maybe raise the blacks a little bit because I don't see like a pure black and right now her hair is like pure black like here we have like really dark uh, spots so and why do we do this because if you match the values, then you just need to match colors. Because if she was actually there, she would be affected by the same light, right? And that would make her have the same values as everything else. Okay, I think, I think that's decent. Um, I'm gonna uncheck the black and white layer. And now you can see like the values are more or less the same thing, but we also affected colors. And to fix that, on our adjustment layer, I'm gonna 
change the blending mode to luminosity and that way we don't really affect the colors we just affect the values now we will uh, actually work with the color and for that um we can do a bunch of different uh things so you can even either even no either go with color balance and i'm gonna clip it to the same the same model um just my layer what no the same uh model layer and you can just adjust it with your own like perception and like you can adjust it by eyesight basically or i'm going to show you other a different option if you use the curves adjustment layer and you clip it to your model and you select the actual adjustment and not the layer mask so i'm selecting the actual adjustment and you press alt and you click on the auto button it shows you the auto color correction option. So basically the settings for the auto button. And if you go to find dark and light colors, you can actually choose like, okay, so this is the color for the highlight. This is the color for the shadow. I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna change the color of the dark uh, of the shadows and choose maybe something around here. Or maybe this one. Yeah, let's go with this. One. Oh. I'm sorry, this is, uh, I'm getting reflection from the lights <laughs> and it's kind of weird. Okay, from the highlight, I'm gonna try and get a highlight from here maybe, yeah. Like that seems fair. And you can even like do the, the mid-tones. I'm not gonna, oh, I wasn't gonna do it, but apparently I did it. It's 50%. Great. There you go. Um, okay. So now we press OK and it's going to pop this box. Save the new target colors as default. And you're going to say no because that's telling Photoshop, oh, this is the colors I'm going to use for every single time I press the auto button. And that's not real. You're not going to do that. So we you can do that or you can do this. Like it really depends. Like as you can see now, the model matches the vibe of the background but since her face is being lit by like uh, artificial light her face looks a little bit weird so i'm gonna do it like this is me as um artist i'm gonna take the i'm gonna make the decision of reintroducing some of the light that she had previously on the like the original photo and that's just for me it's a, an artistic choice it's not me matching her so i'm gonna go here with the like on the levels adjustment since that's what's affecting her values this is a soft round brush as you can see like i took all my brushes out so i use the same things as anybody would ha like have access to and now i'm gonna just with black i'm gonna just erase the the adjustment layer a little bit so i'm painting black on the layer mask if you wanted to make it realistic you would like maybe create some like light spots because you have like light rays coming from the top but here is where you introduce your own personal taste because if you look at this let me just go back into her being correct to correctly lit so if you look at this she matches the background and maybe what i would do here would be like i would um, duplicate the background layer and maybe go to blur gallery uh you can either do filled blur or tilt shift i'm gonna do tilt shift because that's the what what's naturally on the background layer currently i'm gonna drop this to like here since that's where she is and i'm just gonna drag this so it creates a, like um a realistic blur effect and i'm gonna maybe drop the blur to like 10 bam and if i now wait it's thinking okay if i now like would crop this image 
like it matches she matches the actual image right and i was starting to tell you stuff about lay before i finished this video how dare i right i need to milk this i need to make you watch the next one but but yeah like if blending images is all you wanted from me today this is it like this is legit just it maybe you can even like do one of these and invert it so you have like a a mood i don't know that's up to you and to your taste yeah so this would be a blended model into a background but we are creating an art piece so if you want to follow the art piece journey watch the next video and the next video i'm going to be talking about light and shadow and how to create all that so i really hope you enjoy this uh, i hope you got the techniques uh the levels and the curves and you understood that you need to uh, match your values and color to your background and the easiest way to like cop out with matching everything is just blur it at the end and then like if you blur the background you can just get out of like suffer free <laughs> so yeah if you have any questions about this let me know in the comments and i will try to answer everyone and try to explain everything i can and i will see you in the next video if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe down below and share with a friend because that helps a lot and i'm really proud that the channel is growing again so yeah see you in the next video goodbye